Assalamu alaikum friends, welcome back to the channel, all is with Yunus Shapiri. In this video, you are going to see one of the techniques that will help us improve our test in terms of flexibility and readability. Let's get started. So here I'm having a simple, like this is just a made up example to test something. We do have product data, we do have user data classes, these are data classes, and we have also a shopping card in which we can accept a user. Currently, we are not using the users just for the sake of providing some data. And then we do have some tests, as you can see here. We do have the user shopping card, then we do have creating the product, adding them, and then checking different things, checking out if you can add things to the card, remove them, and also check the total price. Okay, if you run the test right now, everything passes as expected, as you can see, fine. Now there is one maybe problem in this test, okay? So the test, as you can see, can see like there is a great deal of data duplication here is lucky. You can tell me that uh, maybe we can extract them into functions and so on. That would work fine, of course. But as you can see, like we need some good way because this product won't be used only here in this shopping cart test. Maybe there is other classes that need this data. So the problem here is about test data. And you are going to use this data across many, many tests and features. So it makes sense to extract some common structure that will help us like create this user data easily. There is one technique called test builder pattern, which is just a builder design pattern in which you create users by adding like IDs, username, and this thing, right? But we keep it just specific for the test. We don't need it in the production code. So let's give the example. Let's start by doing that. What you can do first, you can create a class called user data builder. You can create it as it is right now. So here what we are going to create, we are going to create the components that make up a user, which is ID, username, and email. You can do them like the following, create vars here that need to be changed. And at the moment of creation, you can pass those. Right now you can create a var of an ID like that, and you simply put the string. That's perfectly fine. Then we create the other one, the same thing with the username, like following, and also finally the email as well. At the beginning, you can set up like default values that will be shared across all the tests. Like if you, if you are going to create a user uh, right away without passing any parameters, these are the values that are going to be used. Okay, that's perfectly fine. Maybe you can extract them into some constant that you can use because sometimes you compare whether the right IDs was there and so on. So maybe you call it default ID, default username, and default email, and just make it here at companion object maybe. Okay. Now we are going to create some functions specific to changing those one. We can basically do something like set ID, set username, set email, but for the purpose, like it's conversion, like it's like that in the book of uh, growing object oriented software by tests. This is the London School of Test Driven Development. So basically you use the width. That way it makes great sense in the, in the test code. Okay, so create a function, for example, with ID, in which you are going to pass simply an ID as string, in this one, this is the builder pattern. It means you are going to return the user data build. And here, of course, you are going to change the ID to the one uh, of this instance. And we are going to return the current instance, which is this one. We do the same thing for the other ones, username and email, of course. So it will be something like that. That would work perfectly fine. Finally, we need the moment of truth, which is function of the build. You can call it build, you can call it create, whatever you want. This one will return us the user, of course. So we're going to return the user of the following things, which are the ID, email, and this one. That's all you need. Now, here is the fun part. You can use here to create a new user builder and then put the things, or you can create another function here. Let's put it here at companion object. You can put it at companion object, or you can put it, yeah, it's much better done here. You can create a function that will act as a way to create that builder for you. Like it's just a good name. So you can call it a user like that, in which it will give you the user data build, the instance, okay? That way, what we can do, we can do the following, like it reads very well, we can use val user like that. It is a user, a user, this one. Okay, we are going to do like static imports, of course, that's the beauty of it. And then we can specify the things, and then we can do the build. By default, like this one is the current one, like, we are using this thing, but I can set specific things. That's the beauty of it. I can have default values, but I can set specific things that are relevant to this test alone. Okay, so I can change the ID to be two and then use the user. That's all you need. Maybe in this test, I can change, like I can put the user, but I want to change only the username. The username interests me in this type of test, so I can do some specific tests. 
I can pass that username. And the beauty, what is the beauty here? You can see that from this test to this test, there is some difference, of course, here. So I know that this test required ID to do some specific thing, and this one required a username to do some specific things. And that's the beauty of it. That's really a good thing to distinguish what the tests are doing here. Finally, I can have a simple user here at the end. It doesn't need anything. That's pretty much it. That's the idea of the builder patch. We are going to do the same thing, but here you need to extract that to something, to another class. Yeah, just another class called test data filter like that. Okay, and if I'm going to check it, it is here. That's pretty it. And this is specific to the test. I can share it across many tests. I can create users with default values, or you can have even some specific things if you want to take it to the next level. You can have some kind of users that are done for specific scenarios that would also work maybe you want to have a invalid user for example maybe in some tests you want to test what is the possibility of passing invalid users and you are going to do many of those tests you can create invalid user like that for example like this can be localized here maybe different user may have this minus one have an empty thing and have an invalid email maybe something at com for example so this represents an invalid user that I can use this instance across many, many tests, okay? So that's the beauty of it. We can do the same thing for the product also, especially if this thing is too big. Here is an example of our product data builder, for example, which is basically the exact same thing with ID, with name, with price, it's just different in the signature, of course. And now we can change those. Here is a product one and product two. They are different products. Basically, you can have here also a companion object in which you provide the same thing, which is function, maybe you can call it an order or a product like that, in which it will create for you the same thing, which is the product data builder like that. And that way you can use it from here, a product. And of course you are going to do with all of those. So by default, here is the thing I'm going to, I'm not going to put default values for this one. I'm going to write it from scratch. So we do have with the price, with name, with ID. So the ID is the following one with price and we have also with name okay so the name is this one and the price is this one. of course you have to put it okay the same thing is applied here and i can see that these are two different products with two different prices and so on so the same thing is applying here and one of the products is used here I can run my tests in order to confirm that everything started well as expected. Maybe we included some wrong things. Yeah, exactly. So this is what we call the test builder patch. Okay. This is a great patcher in order to simplify our tests, to make it flexible. Well, it's not for free. Like we do have some complexity here. You have to write some code in order to get that. You won't get that by default. But the beauty of it, like this is a simple code, right? It's just a builder patcher. To be honest with you, I didn't write this code for the product myself. I just used ChatGPT. I told him like, hey, uh, hey, I'm having this product class. Give me a test builder pattern for this thing and he wrote it for me like this is a good thing to use artificial intelligence for such a good things and basically you can confirm just by us that it is using the right things okay so definitely this is a great pattern to use consider using it in your test it will simplify the test and test data is really critical to make the tests run well yeah so consider using it because test data is like the backbone of good uh, written tests of course and beauty of it we do have two types of tests instrumentation tests and also the unit tests you can extract the model we did the video about that i will put the link somehow somewhere here or here so you can share this structures into shared things that can be used in the instrumentation test and in the normal test for writing good unit tests. okay so that's that is the technique if you want to learn more about it try to read the book of growing object oriented software with tests okay this is by netprice and his friend and yeah that's basically it thank you very much for watching this video to the end don't forget to subscribe to the channel and see you in the next videos Salam alaikum.